Well, greetings and salutations. This is Rick. I hope you're having a great day. It's been two months uh, of cloud cover, but tonight the stars are out. So I decided to come out to the shed, get the telescope up and running and uh, see what I can find. So before I do anything, I'm going to go make a cup of tea and I should be back with you in a moment. Right, I thought I'd go for uh, coffee instead of tea. Got a nice little uh, one with some cream on the top and some little sprinklers. <laughs> Very nice. Right, as it finished, oh it has. Uh, while I was making my tea, I uh, or coffee rather, I thought I'd leave a snapshot of Andromeda um, running. Let me turn you around a little bit. Hopefully you can see that. You're, you're a bit on the skew. There we go. And uh, this was taken on 100 ASA and it was for 300 seconds, which is five minutes. And if you look closely, hopefully you can see, uh, I'll show you on the screen if this isn't, isn't very clear. But what you might notice is all of these stars are completely round. And that's because I'm now using a guide scope and I've only just got it working. Um, let me call that the program. OK, this is my guide scope software and uh, I had most of yesterday out here trying to get it to work and I couldn't get it to work and it turned out in the end that I had the wrong focal length. Um, so I put the right focal length in, did a re recalibrated it all and it's now working. So I'm quite chuffed about that. Now, essentially what happens is on the guide scope, it's got a little camera on it and you, you can see it's pointing at the uh, the sky here you can see Andromeda and you can see various stars and what you do is you select a star uh, I've got that star there and it blows it up here uh, and then what it does is it sends little signals off to the uh, to the the mount uh, to, to make these little micro movements so that it keeps that star right in the center of those crosshairs uh, and so you shouldn't get any star trails or any drifting and so far touch wood it seems to be working so I'm quite chuffed about that. So the question is now, do I want to photograph the Andromeda galaxy or do I want to photograph something else? I, I always end up doing this. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to photograph the Andromeda galaxy tonight because I think we've got rain coming at about one o'clock in the morning. It's now 10 o'clock, so that gives me probably two and a half hours wiggle room. So I don't want to spend the evening running around trying to look for places or look for things to photograph. I've got quite a good picture of Andromeda. And uh, so if you blow up Andromeda on the... Let me just move you back a little bit so you can see. Now if you blow Andromeda up on Stellarium, you can see it's quite a distinct galaxy shape. But if you blow it up on the pictures that I'm taking, it's quite um, it's quite misty. That may actually be because it's a little bit overcast and a little bit there's a tiny little bit of mist going on. I'm just gonna have a quick look with my own eyes and see what's going on. Um, it's pretty starry out there, but there's a very very slight haze. Um, so. Uh, I'm not sure how to proceed. I think what I'm going to do before I do anything is let me call up uh, this file. Where is it? Uh, it's in pictures. Backyard EOS. Let me call up that file in Photoshop. Let me have a little play with it and see whether I can get any um, any details, any finer details on this by just doing what I normally do. Uh, and what I normally do is I just enhance the levels and I go into the individual reds, greens and blues and just tweak them. Um, and let's see if I can pull out any detail from that one photograph. And if I can, I'll continue with Andromeda. Otherwise, I shall find another nebula to photograph. Uh, OK, so that's the levels. Let's zoom in a little bit. Not a huge amount of detail going on there. If I go to color, uh, replace color, and then select some of this fuzzy area, um, and then de bring the, the light down. Yeah, it's just, there's no definition there. It's just a big, 
a big bright blur so I'm not going to worry about Andromeda tonight um, I think uh, I don't think I'm going to get any detail I might I might leave Andromeda actually till the winter when I've got really crisp clear skies and I might be able to get a better um, view of it but I did find this website um, which is called uh, dsobrowser.com deep space object um, browser and it's these are your best suggestions uh, for what's in the sky tonight and you've got Bode's Galaxy which I've, I've done quite a few times now you've got the Trian Triangulum Galaxy or the Bright Nebula uh, that looks interesting because it's interesting colours there um, or I can do a specific uh, if I type click Nebulae and uh, sort by magnitude or rise Possibly rise because that'll be like it's in the height in the sky. Uh, so you've got something called a bright nebula NGC 1333, and that's uh, that's south. That's that way. Um, you've got something called the bright nebula. You've got the. Uh, I'm not sure. Let me have a look at this one. Bright nebula NGC 1333. So let's call it up. So we go to Stellarium, uh, NGC, NGC, 1333. All right, and we'll head over there. Oh, no, it's too low in the horizon. That's no good. Uh, so let's see what else we've got. Uh, or better still, if I go... Uh, wow, that's a good picture, isn't it? Andromeda again. All right, how about Bodes then? <laughs> Have another go at Bodes. Uh, Stellarium. Let's see if we can find Bodes Galaxy. B O D E S. Come on. Go. Oh, it's right here. It's right behind there. Oh, it's too low in the sky as well then. Um, is that Bodes Galaxy? Hmm. Okay, the Californian Nebula. Where is this? This is heading north. No, that's going to. Uh, buildings are probably going to be about here. Um, it w I would like to photograph something that's got red gaseousness in it because I want to really sort of put this um, astro camera to the test. So I could maybe go for the Heart Nebula. Let's have a look. I'll get an alarm in a second. Yeah. <laughs> because I stopped, I didn't stop the the tracking scope uh, or the auto guider. As soon as it lost its star, it comes up with an alarm. So, um, right, where's the telescope pointing? That's, ooh, is that, let's have a look. Is that at the building? No, it's in the, no, it's in the sky, that's good. Okay, so those are the stars um, above the uh, the Heart Nebula. If I select a star, it'll call it up there. 3.72, 3.83, that's about the brightest one, I think. I should get it to follow that one. Um, west pointing east. Right, I've got to find the, the side of the pier. So I am pointing northeast. So if I'm pointing east, I need a west side of pier selection. So that's now following that star, so that's good. Uh, let's go take a snapshot and see what we can get. So what I'll do is I'll go to ISO 6400 and I'll just do a, 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 a 20 second shot. Let's see if there's any um, nebulosity there. And if it is, if there if there's a, a hint of it, then I'll set it up and that's what I'll photograph tonight. Let's just check the weather. Uh, <clears throat> weather here. Can you see that all right? Let's, uh, let's try to give you a slightly better angle there. Right, so we've got clear skies until about 1 o'clock. Hopefully you can see that. And then the clouds come in at 2. So I've literally got about 3 hours and then that's my lot. So let's uh, have a look at this. Can't see a lot. 
let's go down to uh, 1600 and let's do a I don't know a minute and a half or 60 something and let's do a 90 second shot let's see if any of those reds come through now one of the things I was getting a bit concerned about was um, the weight of that telescope I know it's sort of pushing the envelope a little bit with the size of the scope I've got um, with the the HEQ5 uh, HEQ5 Pro is, is the mount um, and I know it can take the uh, the telescope I've got on it uh, which is the Explore Scientific AR152 but with all the extra bits on it like the camera and the uh, the finder scope and now the um, the auto guider I'm wondering whether the weight um, is maybe an issue so what I've done is I've actually removed the finder scope um, and I've also uh, with the camera normally I use this this is a battery pack that goes on on the bottom of the camera I've actually removed it uh, so I've literally just got the uh, the single battery in the camera uh, just to save a bit of weight and like I say at the moment this finder scope really seems to be doing its job well so um, I think I, I don't know whether it's helping or not at all but um, I mean maybe what I might do on the next session is reintroduce the battery pack uh, and if I have any issues um, then I know there may be um, an issue with the extra weight and I'll, you know I know what to do I'll just reduce some of the weight so let's see what comes up back if there's any hint of any nebulosity there I think there is in the middle there it's very very faint uh, so what I'll do is I'm gonna grab that there it is I'm gonna open it with Photoshop uh, so I wonder if I can tweak it here no oh, I'm just gonna open the image and let me just alter the levels so we go into the red and then we just uh, drag those little arrows closer towards this block and then look you can actually see some of the red starting to appear some of the nebulosity um, so I'll do the same with the green uh, and with the blue you can see a little bit of red nebulosity there but it's sort of washed out by this red haze and I think that's potentially light pollution but if I get a stack of images uh, it, it might look okay but again we've got that slight haziness going on so um, one of the other ones that came up today was the elephant's trunk nebula so if we have a quick look at that oops my guide scope shouting at me again um, I'll have a quick look at the elephant's trunk nebula because I think that one's quite uh, it's got a bit of a shape to it if I remember right let's just have a quick look on uh, Google um, ele oh, elephant's trunk uh, nebula there we go if I look up the images yeah there's a bit of a, a shape thing going on there so um, I wonder if we might be able to get something of that tonight I don't know let's just pick our guide star again and we'll start guiding and we're still pointing east so that's west side of pier okay all right and let's just take a snap actually we're gonna need more than a snapshot because this is so faint um, let's go down to 800 ISO and let's do a two minute exposure and see what it looks like um, like I say this is the elephant's trunk nebula and I'm guessing it's just gonna be a bit faint tonight um, it's uh, I think it's one of those ones that you you need to set off really early in the night and just concentrate on it throughout the, the whole night um, so I've got absolutely no hint of any nebulosity there uh, again let me call it up into Photoshop and see if I can just have a little tweak with it um, open image and we go enhance lighting levels 
go to the reds and just tweak yeah I can see a tiny tiny little bit of a shape going on there but it's so faint um, this is how I've kind of figured out what's worth photographing and what's not on a given you know with the given time I've got yeah there's definitely a tiniest tiniest little faintest little bit of nebulosity there but it's not enough I don't think it's gonna be enough for tonight so let's have a quick look at that actually the wizard nebula that's that's quite shapely let's have a quick look at that oh keep forgetting the guide scope every time but I'm really glad I've got that guide sto guide scope it's given me a lot of confidence to do long exposures now um, right so we're there let's just start the guide scope choose a star um, 4.26 4 4.35 4.1 uh, 5.7 oh, that's an odd shape I'm not sure I'm going to use that one. That's a slightly. It's like two. It's two stars right next to each other. Um, let's go for that 4.5 one. We'll use that. And again, we're still pointing uh, east, so uh, side of pier is west. So okay. Right. Again, I'm going to use a. Actually, if I do it. Go, Let's let's go for it. Let's do an ISO of four hundred and let's do a uh six twelve twenty-four thirty twenty-four. Let's do let's do a four minute. Let's do a four minute on an ISO of four hundred. And because this if you actually look at this on can you see that? Yeah, I think you can. Um there's there's a bit of a shape going on here. This is on the wizard ne nebula, and it's high enough in the sky. Because I know when you when you get hazy skies, um, the further up you go, the better, because the the haze increases as you uh, go sort of towards the horizon. Because you're you're looking through it, um, it's more thick there than it is sort of directly above. Um, so I think I will. Uh, how high am I? I'm I'm sort of looking up quite high, so. Uh, I kind of got some hope for this one, I think. The thing is, I, I sort of seem to insist on looking for nebula, which is, from what I understand, the harder stuff to photograph. Um, I could probably quite easily do galaxies or, or just star clusters, but I don't know, star clusters don't, don't appeal to me that much because it's just like a black background with a bunch of dots together. Um, they don't really kind of, I mean, you know, they're interesting, but to photograph, they're not that spectacular to look at. Um, perhaps you can prove me wrong by making some some suggestions of perhaps some star clusters I, I ought to have a go at photographing. Um, but I think star clusters are probably a lot easier to photograph. Um, but the problem is because of the chromatic aberration that I get with this telescope, you can see these these bloated purple uh, rings around the um, the stars here um, that's an inherent flaw it's not a flaw but it's an inherent part of this type of telescope um, I, I think had I had I known uh, this I would have probably when I bought my telescope I would have probably gone for an APO telescope um, but they're like a lot more money for for something that's half decent but I think with the the APO telescopes, you don't get this this um, chromatic aberration. Um, but uh, never mind, that's uh, that's on my wish list in the future. But for now, I've got to work with what I've got. So we're over halfway there now, and uh, I think I I really need to settle on something. So I, I think I am going to settle on this Wizard Nebula. Because um, it's now half past ten, half eleven, half twelve. I've literally got two and a half hours, and there's nothing else there jumping out at me. I see. I do this every time, don't I? I sort of, um, I spend the evening going, "Oh, what shall I, uh, what shall I photograph?" And then I finally find something, and uh, I kind of run out of time. I might, I actually do that when I, 
when I watch Netflix, if I don't know what I want to watch, I can I can waste a whole evening looking through what's available and not actually watch anything. Um, but I know I'm not the only person who does that. A friend of mine, um, uh, he's the same. He'll uh, he'll go through all this, um, you know, deciding, you know, do I watch this? Do I watch that? And literally, you can waste the whole evening just watching trailers and um, not deciding. Um, right. So the thing is, we got we've got the Milky Way sort of going on in in the sky there and it, that that seems to be where all the more interesting stuff is um, and right now it's all up there um, but like I say some of it's just so faint I mean we, we've got the Andromeda galaxy here um, but I just like I say I tried photographing that earlier but it's just it's just a big blob you know because of the the haze we've got going on there I, oh I'm assuming it's because of the haze that we've got going on there Right then, so um, what we're looking at, the Wizard Nebula. Yeah, I can definitely see some distinct red going on there. So once again, I'm just going to pop that into uh, Photoshop. So there it is. So I wonder if I can tweak anything here that'll make it... Um, because this is a raw photo, you can actually change things. Um, as if you're changing the settings on your camera. Look, if I put the whites up straight away, you can see this redness around there. Um, but, uh, oops, let's try that again. Open with Photoshop. Uh, so I'll just open the raw image as it is. And again, look, that was a, f what was that, a four minute? A four minute exposure, whoops, and those stars are pretty round, although they look a little bit blurry. Am I losing focus? Um, actually, they've got a little bit of a trail on them. I did, yeah, I did set that. Um, Okay, maybe I should select a different star. That's a, that one's a little bit more contrasty. So if I go with that one, uh, or how about that one? That one, not too bad. Oh, let's try that one. Uh, I'm going to take another shot. I'm going to do. So let's do an ISO. 800 and we'll do 220 and while that's being taken I will go into here uh, fit screen and I'll do my thing again so enhance lighting levels RGB all right reds I just kind of move the little outside handles towards the um, this block here, um, yeah, that, there you go. You can see uh, there's definitely nebula there. Uh, okay, yeah. Look, let me save a copy of this file. Uh, save as I'll save it as a JPEG, um, and then I can put it up on the screen, and you can see that there's a very definite. Um, nebulosity red going on there um, even though this this has very very slight star trails on it so I probably won't use it if I stack um, these images um, but again we've still got that whole chromatic aberration issue I get much more aware of it now all right let me just double check uh, this picture yeah there's round stars there which is good so I'm going to stick with this all right so I'm sticking with the wizard nebula I'm going to do uh, 800 ASA or 400 uh, I think I'm going to stick with 800 and 220 seconds it looks fine 
Uh, maybe I'll, I'll just stick with that and I'll do a bunch of exposures. Let's say, let's do 10. Um, in fact, I could get away with slightly less, maybe 200 seconds. Um, and these will be my lights. Uh, so I'm going to do that. So I'm going to do 10 exposures, uh, 200 uh, seconds, ISO 800. Let's just go for it. So that's it. I'm not moving the telescope anymore tonight. I'm just going to concentrate on the Wizard Nebula. So this is the bit where astrophotography, I guess, gets really dull because I now have to wait until 11.05. It's now 10.30. Uh, so I literally got to wait over half an hour um, before I can do anything. So there we go, literally we've just got two photographs that I blended together. And already you can see the, the redness of that nebulosity. If I go to the green channel there a minute, there's quite a lot of green going on. And then the blue channel, just adjust the blue. And this is a stage, I mean, let me save this and I can put it up on the screen for you. So, um, okay, file. Uh, save as, I'll save it as a JPEG. Oh, I don't want to replace it, no. Uh, I'll just call it sample one. Uh, there we go. So I'll put this up on the screen for you now. And now you can see where this chromatic aberration sort of starts to get annoying. You can see this purple bloating on all of the bright stars. And uh, I'm sort of becoming very, very aware of that now, and I'm not entirely sure how to deal with it apart from changing the telescope to something that doesn't cause this. Um, but uh, that's something I'm not going to be able to do for a long time. I've got to start saving up the pennies if I want to do that. Although I, I can sell this telescope, so obviously that what I get for that will go part way towards uh, the cost. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to um, I'm going to see if I can dig out that light um, board as well, which I can show you. But uh, what I'm going to do, as soon as the the 10 frames have, have been taken, um, in fact, I wonder if it's worth doing more than 10 while I can. Let me just have a quick look at the sky. get this door shut up as well it's uh so I can uh, have a natter and not disturb my neighbors yeah there's still a bit of a haze going on up there so it's not ideal um, so like I say I, what I'm really starting to come to realize now is uh, this is going to be kind of like a, a winter thing um, more than a summer thing. In the summer, even when we get clear nights, you've still got this kind of lingering haze. Um, and I'm going to be assuming that in the winter time, and I've done it in the winter, um, uh, and the skies have been really clear. So um, I, I don't know if you're if you're a sort of a British astronomer, um, and you can sort of advise me on that. But I, I'm assuming just purely from what I've found out just through experience. Um, is that summertime stargazing? I mean, it's 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 nice because you got the warm weather and you can sit here in t-shirt and shorts. But um, I think for the best pictures, I'm assuming I'm going to have to wait till the, you know, the cold, the real chilly nights um, to get the clearest skies. So what I'm going to do? Uh, what are we on now? We're on just coming up to eleven o'clock. Um, this will be finished at about five past eleven. Now I think it makes sense because all the calibration frames, they most of them need the lens cap on or the uh, the light board on, so they don't actually need to photograph the sky. So I think what I need to do is just keep photographing this uh, for as long as I can before the clouds come in. Um, I think that makes sense to me. So what I'll do is I will do another batch of these while I can before the rain clouds come in. Uh, I'll keep going as long as I can 
um, and then when I'm ready to do my uh, calibration frames I'll come back to you so I will see you in a moment right then this is uh, doing number eight uh, of the second batch so we've got 18 of these pictures so far um, I'm gonna do another 10 so I've got 20 lights and then I'm gonna go on and do my darks but I want to show you this uh, this is what I'm gonna be using to make my is it bias frames let me just double check make sure I've got the name right um, now the flat frames this is what I'm going to use for flat frames now this is um, it's a kind of a, a sketch board that uh, artists use and uh, it's got LEDs in it and it runs on a little USB um, thing and people uh, they'll plug it in and then they'll put a piece of paper over it and they'll draw on it and uh, because I was trying to figure out what sort of a light source can I make that's portable uh, that I can put over the front of the um, the telescope and this is what I, I sort of decided to use and if you plug in the USB plug there we go you've got yourself a light uh, a light source it's quite an even light source and I got this the right size so this will go straight over the top of the telescope um, and then I can uh, take the necessary photos oh dear look seem to have picked up um, I'd imagine that's a passing aircraft uh, or a UFO. There's a second one there as well. Oh, that's interesting. I've never seen one with a red light like that. It's always been a white light. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I thought that was quite a cool idea. Um, because uh, I know some people like they'll build light boxes and things like that, but you've actually got to stand it over the end of the telescope. And also, um, I think you, you can't move the telescope, you can't move anything. So um, what you want is something that will just kind of sit there quite happily. This has got a little bit of a lip on it, um, so if you get it in the right position it should just sit there. Even, even if you're at a bit of an angle, um, it should hopefully sit there without too much of an issue. There you go, look, I'm holding on to the lip with my thumb there. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm going to be using for the, um, I can't remember what I'm now, for the flat frames. Um, so basically you put a light source over the front of the um, telescope, you keep the settings exactly the same, um, but you use an exposure so that you, I think you get like just kind of a, like a flat grey, um, and then once you put those into your mixing software, your blending software, um, I'm using something called Deep Sky Stacker I think, um, then it knows what to do with them, and hopefully it should sort of give you a good image. That's good timing, the stars are just starting to disappear now. Um, it's getting very misty out there. Well, let's, let's take a shot. So, um, 0.3 seconds, let's take a picture and see what comes back. So I'm looking for a, a grey, that's, a, that's quite white. So if I go 0.2, so I'm looking for an even grey like this. So this should be a little bit darker it's no change all right and a one two hundredth one two hundredth of a second does that look about right so there we go we're just going to wait for those to um fill up uh, all 36 of them and we've got one two three four five six done already um, and then that is it that's me finished for the night like I say, the stars have all gone in now, so this has been kind of quite good. Um, it was it was good timing. I was a little bit disappointed with yesterday's um, viewing. I was I was here till about two about two in the morning yesterday, and it was quite a frustrating and a, and a disappointing session, basically because I just couldn't get the um, the auto guider to work properly. And there's been some very nice people on uh, the Stargazers forums. Um, that have helped me to figure out what I needed to do and it turned out to be the focal length I, I had the wrong focal length and when I changed it to the right focal length I didn't calibrate it um, but uh, it's all working beautifully tonight so I'm really really happy um, that I came in here and, and did this um, because uh, if I didn't do this tonight and, and we end up with another two months of uh, 
cloudy skies that we've had I would constantly be having this disappointment in the back of my mind thinking oh you know I'm, I'm just I'm just really glad I've got this problem fixed so that I can now look forward to my next session um, knowing it's all working so that's really good so there we go um, what I'll do is I'll work on this picture probably tomorrow um, or the day after and this video this video is probably not going to go up straight away um, so uh, I'll put it all together and then whatever result we get from this picture I'll tag it on uh, at the end of this video um, again I'm not entirely sure if this type of video is for everyone I know some people said that they enjoyed the last one um, if there's specific things you want me to do in this type of video because um, sometimes it's uh, it, it gets I don't really want to keep talking about the same stuff all the time because it feels like you're just kind of repeating yourself all the time um, but if you've got any ideas on what I can sort of chat about or whatever um, do feel free to leave notes um, you know in the, in the comments below so there we go that's it from this video guys uh, thanks for watching have a great rest of the day and I'll see you in another video till then take care